Hey, what is going on, guys? In this video today, we're going to be going over the new Fortnite update 8.30. Now, I don't think this was a bad update by any means, because there's a solid amount of important stuff in here. But the community as a whole was pretty disappointed by it. Especially after Epic announced the size of the update, because it was something like 4GB on console and 6GB on PC, which is much bigger than normal for a weekly update. That led to people pretty much getting their hopes up that Fortnite would do something like bring back health slash mats per kill, unban stretched res in competitive events, or add a brand new field of view slider into the game. But none of that ended up coming to fruition in update 8.30. And honestly, I think until Fortnite does at least one of those three major changes I just mentioned, people are going to continue to be upset by each new weekly update, and I really don't blame them. But again, I don't want to make it seem like 8.30 was a bad update. We got one of the most game-changing new items added to Fortnite in a while, some really big changes to console and controller specifically, and stop me if you've heard this one before, but we also got a bunch of major bug fixes. And unlike in some previous updates, I can confirm that at least a few of those fixes actually did work. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so the first thing I want to talk about from update 8.30 is the following change geared towards controller players. Fortnite finally added a separate editing sensitivity into the game. Now, first thing I gotta say is that it's honestly ridiculous that this took so long to finally be added. If you don't remember, for the first year or so of Fortnite, the speed at which you edited structures was based on your X and Y sensitivity. This was always kind of annoying because people usually play on a relatively low X and Y sensitivity because that's what you use for aiming. And after a separate building sensitivity was added into the game, people rightfully asked why there wasn't an editing sensitivity option as well. So in January, Fortnite finally did something about that. But instead of simply giving a separate editing sensitivity like everybody wanted, or even just an editing sensitivity multiplier, they made it so that instead of editing speed being tied to X and Y sensitivity, it was now going to be tied to building sensitivity. So that definitely was an improvement, but it still also wasn't what people truly wanted. But now, a little over four months later, we finally got a dedicated editing sensitivity multiplier, hallelujah. And it's also worth noting that the editing sensitivity multiplier is tied back to X and Y sensitivity again, and not building sensitivity. It's as simple as this, let's say you have 6x and 6y sensitivity. If you put your editing sensitivity multiplier to 1.5, you'll edit at the speed of 9 sensitivity. So now that you can have a totally separate editing sensitivity, I'm sure some of you guys are wondering what you should do with it. Now, so far, I'm still using the same editing sensitivity as my building sensitivity. And that's mostly due to the fact that I literally can't go any higher because it's at 2.0, which is the max. But I have a feeling that over time, for most people, editing sensitivity is going to end up working out the same way building sensitivity did when that was added into the game. For me personally, at first I went with a relatively low building sensitivity multiplier. I think it was right around 1.3 or something. As time went on, I started bumping that up little by little every few days or so. And now, here we are about 6 months later, I'm at a 2.0 multiplier and I wish I could go even higher than that. So, I wouldn't really recommend turning your editing sensitivity any lower than whatever it initially was, unless you just feel totally out of control with it. And even though editing definitely takes a bit more precision than building, I would still try to gradually bump your editing sensitivity up as time goes on. The next thing that we're going to cover from update 8.30 are the various gameplay based bug fixes. Now, there are a ton of those in here, but the majority of them are either so rare that almost nobody has ever experienced them, or they're fixing pretty irrelevant things. For example, fixed a spelling error in the elimination feed with the boom bow. I'm not saying those things shouldn't be fixed, just that they aren't really important at all in the grand scheme of things. But there are a few specific bug fixes that I want to point out and briefly discuss. 
First off, we have this. Hit markers are now server authoritative. We've heard the feedback that hit markers are sometimes seen for shots, but don't apply damage. So we're going to delay showing them until the server has confirmed the hit. So this is basically Epic's latest attempt at fixing the common error known as ghost shots in Fortnite. Which is basically, when you shoot somebody, it gives you the hit marker that your shot hit, but it doesn't deal or show any actual damage. And those ghost shots are caused by a bunch of different potential issues regarding your connection to the servers. So what Epic did with this bug fix is that they didn't really eliminate ghost shots from happening, they just made it so that you won't see them happening. With the old ghost shots, you'd hit someone and get a misleading hit marker. Now, when you get a ghost shot, you'll hit someone, but you won't see anything. So, I think a fair conclusion here is that ghost hit markers are gone, but ghost shots aren't. And sadly, from what I've read online, fixing ghost shots is something that people don't think Epic will ever really be able to do, because it's apparently a really complicated technical problem to solve. Next up, we have this. Fixed an issue that occasionally prevented weapon fire from queuing for shotguns after switching weapons without repressing the fire key. The way they worded this is definitely a little confusing, but this is a change that's designed to fix shotguns not shooting when you switch to them. What would occasionally happen was, you would swap to your shotgun too quickly or swap during something like a hitch or lag spike, and then it wouldn't shoot when you press the fire button. So that was definitely a really frustrating glitch that would get people killed all the time, and hopefully it's been fixed once and for all by this change. And it may not be this way for everybody, but based on what I've seen, people haven't been having that issue since the update. Next up, we have a pretty major fix regarding audio. There was actually a whole section in here about audio changes, but most of them were relatively minor changes. This one isn't. Fixed a bug where all off-screen enemy footsteps and weapon switches slash reloads would be silent when more than 5 players were nearby. You could easily argue that this was the biggest bug fix in the entire update. I can't tell you how many times I died to players silently sneaking behind me or landing on top of me in chaotic fights. We never really knew the cause of it, but apparently it happened when more than 5 players were near each other on the map. So as long as it works, that's definitely a pretty game changing fix. And finally, what would a Fortnite patch be without the following bug fix announcement? Various level streaming performance optimizations for Switch and Xbox One to reduce cases where players see blurry buildings. I feel like this is kind of starting to become somewhat of an inside joke on this channel. We've seen them try to fix this problem in like 5 different patches now and they've pretty much failed every time. But hopefully this one actually gets the job done because I don't want to ever talk about it again. Now let's move on to talking about the brand new piece of content added in update 8.30, the Respawn Van. And we actually knew this was coming because they announced it a few days before the update was actually released. So directly from the patch notes, here's a brief little description on how it works and some other general information about it. When squad members are eliminated, they now drop their reboot card which can be collected by other squad members. Reboot cards remain in the world for 90 seconds after they've been dropped, and they take 0.5 seconds to pick up. Bringing reboot cards to reboot vans will bring each squad member whose card has been collected back into battle. Collected reboot cards can be turned in by any squad member, regardless of which member picked up the card. It takes 10 seconds to use a reboot van, and once used, it goes on cooldown and cannot be activated again for 120 seconds. And finally, rebooted squad members return with 100 health, a white pistol, 36 light ammo, and 100 wood. So, now that you guys know how they work, here's a map of all the reboot van locations on the Fortnite map. It's pretty much as simple as this, there's one near the middle of every single named town in the game. I think the reboot van is one of the most impactful new items ever added into Fortnite. I think it was designed to make playing squads with friends a lot more fun, since you'll now be able to revive anybody who dies early in the match. And finally, two other quick gameplay changes that I want to mention before wrapping this video up. First off, we have adjusted how storm damage is applied so that players entering the storm will have a set amount of time before damage is taken. 
The initial instance of damage will start one second after entering the storm. So pretty self-explanatory there, you basically get one second of invulnerability to storm damage now. I think it's a cool little change, and it should be a nice help during laggy endgame moving circle situations, especially if you're on console. Also, the infantry rifle had its damage decreased from 40-42 to 38-40, but its falloff damage at maximum range was increased from 26-28 to 32-34. So, trading a little bit of damage for a little bit of range, not much more you can possibly say than that. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you watched the entire thing, be sure to let me know with a comment down in the comment section below. I want to know your quick thoughts on anything contained in Update 8.30. Are you happy to finally get a separate editing sensitivity? Have you noticed the bug fixes either working or not working? Or what are your overall thoughts on the new respawn van? Be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, do whatever the heck you want, and I will catch you guys next time.